In this video, we are going to discuss in greater detail how we know that Thomas North wrote the plays that Shakespeare later adapted for the stage. We're also going to clear up a few misunderstandings about the theory. In April of 2006, the New York Times ran an article on an extraordinary example of plagiarism, Kavya Viswanathan's borrowings, from Megan McCafferty novels. She also appeared on the Today Show. Examples of, of very similar passages between your book and two of Megan McCafferty's books. And she is the first example given in Richard Posner's book, The Little Book of Plagiarism. This is the example Posner discussed, shared words aren't read. But consider this example of Shakespeare following North, which is even closer. And it is far more extensive. Reports suggest that Viswanathan took as many as 40 passages from McCafferty, comprising about 1,600 words. This is on par with some of the other most notorious examples of plagiarism in history. Stephen Ambrose is borrowing from Thomas Childers, Leonard Stern from Robert Burton, and Tristan Shandy. But Shakespeare has borrowed more than twice as much from Thomas North, more than twice as much as one of the most egregious examples of plagiarism in history. And that's just counting Shakespeare's Coriolanus. You also have to add in Antony and Cleopatra, and Julius Caesar, and 34 other plays, starting with Shakespeare's first and continuing to his last. All of them borrow extensively from Norse writings. They borrow his passages, stories, characters, and images. There's been nothing like this in history, not during Shakespeare's time and not since. You can see hundreds of these recycled passages on SirThomasNorth.com and read about them in detail there as well. These borrowings appear with Shakespeare's first play and continue to his last, and my previous video showed why essentially none of these borrowings can be plausibly attributed to coincidence. Now, the reason for all this obsessive recycling of Norse material in the Shakespeare canon is not because Shakespeare was just plagiarizing everything that North had ever written, including his travel journal and his marginal notes. It's just that Shakespeare was adapting North's old plays. It was Thomas North who was recalling all his old ideas and stories and all his humanist writings. And then when he would put them into his own plays, he would, of course, use his own language. Most writers do this. They repeat their own unique language when repeating the ideas that are important to them. This is part of the subject of forensic linguistics, which has been used to correctly identify anonymous authors, including the Unabomber. Ted Kaczynski's sister-in-law and brother had recognized certain lines in the Unabomber Manifesto, published in the Washington Post, that Kaczynski had written in various anti-technology articles and letters. FBI agent James Fitzgerald examined a number of these parallel lines and knew they had found the Unabomber. Here are a few examples. Kaczynski's lines above, Unabomber's below. Now, some may think a parallel, like scientists benefiting humanity, is kind of obvious and must have been very common. But in each case, the line occurs in an identical anti-technology argument and matches nine consecutive words. This is unlikely to have occurred by chance. Many in the United States first learned about probabilities in forensic linguistics in 2016, when Melania Trump's convention address sounded very similar to Michelle Obama's. In an article discussing such verbal parallels, Megan McArdle noted that just seven words in a row tend to be unique, and writers can easily zero in on one of their past texts by Google searching any seven-word quote from it. And I'm not talking about elaborate sentences, wrote McArdle. I'm talking about boring fragments like, and I'm not talking about elaborate sentences. That appeared nowhere on the internet before her article was published. The same is true with many of the Kaczynski Unabomber parallels. When you search for scientists within 10 words of are motivated, within 10 words of by a desire to benefit humanity, the only results are the writings of Ted Kaczynski. So out of 300 million people in the United States, Fitzgerald was able to pinpoint Ted Kaczynski as the Unabomber due to these verbal fingerprints, due to this linguistic DNA. And while the evidence they had was indisputable, it is really nothing compared to the verbal connections linking Thomas North to the Shakespeare canon. North and Shakespeare share thousands of unique lines and word strings, often when describing the same idea, story, or image. They appear in essentially every act of every play Shakespeare ever wrote, and they derive 
from everything North ever wrote. Essentially, all of these parallels are so rare or even unique that they cannot be attributed to coincidence. But most scholars realize they can't argue it's coincidental and just try to imply instead that this was actually typical of the era, that there was no compunction against plagiarism when Shakespeare was writing, that other writers of the time also borrowed similarly, and he himself also borrowed similarly from other writers. None of that's true, or it's so misleading as to be egregious.